Good afternoon students. I wanted to talk to you briefly about how to create your point of sale project. Um, so this is laid out in the homework uh, description but some students have requested in the past that I do a video on this. So basically what we're going to do is just go to uh, right click on the solution and go to this add. We're going to add a new project. And specifically we're going to look for a WPF application and it should be just WPF application not uh, WPF app.net framework. Now if you are using Visual Studio 2019 that's going to look a little bit different. It's probably going to say WPF core application. I do have an old video from a prior semester that I will also link uh, that you can take a look to look at uh, so you can follow along there uh, and combine it with what we're doing here. So it will reference a different project name but it will be the same idea. So the next screen asks us what we're going to call our project. It's going to be point of sale and we leave the location as fine and then we're going to pick our framework and if you're using Visual Studio 2022 we want to be using .NET 6.0 that's in long-term support and uh, if you are using 2019 you're going to have to use uh, .NET 5.0 which is out of support. Uh, just so you know what those terms mean basically that means Microsoft is not fixing any problems that are found with the .NET 5.0 or 5.0 framework or the .NET 5.0 anymore. They're just, we're done with it. Dust our hands, we're done. We're not going to touch it anymore. 6.0, they have committed to long-term support, which means there is a set period of time where they will fix problems they find in that framework uh, and push those as changes so that you can update your own code that depends on that framework and make sure that it's safe and secure and all of those things. Uh, likewise, .NET Core 3.1 is uh, also in long-term support, although it's uh, going to twilight faster than .NET at 6.0 because it's older. So basically the idea behind that is organizations that build software will commit to supporting some versions of that software for a long period of time. That support costs money because you have to have developers and uh, maintainers working on that project. So they don't want to do it for every version, especially when they have an experimental version like 5.0 was really a stepping stone to get them to .NET 6.0. So in this case, and that's why we started building this course, uh, this semester with .NET 6.0 is because 5.0, which is what we were using last semester, was depreciated uh, and fell out of long-term support. So we'll go ahead and create uh, that project and notice it adds a new project for us called Point of Sale and we've got all that detail in there. Now there's a couple quick changes we want to make to our Point of Sale. Uh, one of those is we're going to right click and come down to the Properties and this will open our Properties window. Now if you're using Visual Studio 2019 this is going to look very different because the way it's laid out has been very much changed. It's the same information it's just a very different looking form. So for example the target framework we can always retarget by changing what we're actually pointing at. We can say oh we want to retarget 5.0 or something like that. Um, and you can only target frameworks that are installed on your system so if you want to target something that's not installed you're going to have to install the SDK to support that. And we're going to scroll down until we get to the assembly name and the default namespace. The assembly name is what it's going to call this project when you build it so if it's a library project you're going to build a DLL file and this would be the name of the DLL so like point of sale dot DLL which our data project its name is point of sale dot or it's data dot DLL and in this case the point of sale is an executable project so we'd want point of sale dot DLL the default namespace is likewise point of sale now they're using this pattern to pull out the name of the project and replace any spaces with underscores um, that's just a stand uh, to set up to make it happen. We can also override this with whatever name we want. In this case we want to call this dino diner dot point of sale. So that means any new class we create in the main folder it's going to use the namespace dino diner dot point of sale. If we didn't do this every time we created a file it would just be in point of sale namespace and we'd have to go add the dino diner dot point of sale because that's what we want to have it called. And that once we've made that change that should update and save that for us um, so that when we build a new project it will be so named. In fact we can jump into our apps.xaml and notice because this was built before that change that it says point of sale.app so it's not in the dino diner names 
namespace like we want. So we're going to go ahead and uh, update that so that it is. And we also have to update the code behind for our XAML files as well. Oh, clicking on it the wrong screen. There we go. Uh, so in here we would likewise change this to dino diner dot point of sale and uh, the same thing for our main window we want that to be dino diner dot point of sale and in its code behind dino diner dot point of sale so we only have to change the ones that actually are in the project now any future ones we create will automatically get the dino diner dot point of sale because we updated that already okay uh, we also will want to add a dependency so we're going to go to add project reference and we're going to add a dependency to our data project. So this is referencing the data project that we've been writing. Go ahead and click OK. We're good there. And that means that it can now use all of the classes that are declared public in the data project here in our point of sale. So that's really the point of writing that library project was so that we could now bring those library classes into this class and use them to uh, make our point of sale project work the way we want it to. All right, the other thing you'll notice is this data project is highlighted, uh, bolded. That means that that's what's set up to be the default project that we'd run when we build this solution. And if you've done this, you've noticed that it probably gave you this message saying that this was a library, I can't run it, but I can build it. Notice that we do have in our output here, uh, build one succeeded, zero failed, zero up to date. So that built the uh, data project. And because the data project has no dependencies, it only needs to build that one project. Now, you should have been building all along. Uh, my graders have been telling me that uh, as much as a quarter of the class has not been building their projects, uh, which is not good because you need to make sure your code compiles. If your code does not compile, it's an automatic zero on the assignments. You guys are uh, far enough in a computer science degree, you should not be writing code that does not compile. It's just you shouldn't be doing that. You should be testing every time that you should be able to compile it, uh, reinforce that. You can build a solution, which will build all the projects. You can build a specific project, which will do that. You can also do it with Control B, will build the specific project uh, that you have open. And you can see here, uh, in this particular case, point of sale build, build failed because the namespace point of sale could not be found type or namespace could not be found. These are in the app.g and the main window.g. And if you're wondering what that .g means, that means that's a generated file. That's actually being generated from this main window.xaml. Uh, so we want to make sure that we have that namespace correct. And the same thing here in the app. Dino diner dot point of sale and in the XAML dino diner point of sale dot app so that should be oh my bad this is a class so this should just be well that, sh that should be right yep so why are we not working here namespace diner diner point of sale that should be let's clean our solution and rebuild it We got some failings. Let's look at our error list. Point to sale could not be found. Again, in the app G. Ah, so the CLR namespace. This is where the problem is. So we need to also change in the XL and the S local. That's just saying to uh, the XAML what the local namespace is for our project. And so there's actually three places you have to remember to change uh, the namespace in the actual class name and then also in uh, these guys. The same thing here, Dino Diner. Okay, so that should take care of that. Uh, needs a period. Okay, now I was saying too, this is our startup project. 
probably from this point on we want to be running the point of sale project so if you right click on that you can come and say set as startup project and now that's the one that's going to be automatically set up to be run when you click the green button and now we're back to where you can run your green button and actually have a program launch which uh, is how it did in 300 uh, so if you aren't haven't been very comfortable building or just didn't understand how to build you can go back to that that methodology but I do want you to understand you can compile, that means build means compile the pro program without actually executing or running the program. You don't have to run the program to build it, but you do have to build it to know if you have errors. Uh, and Visual Studio, uh, for those of you that have been using 2019, if you were targeting a newer framework, the .NET 6.0 framework, that does not uh, work in 2019, so it's not going to populate your error list because it can't actually compile, and it has to be able to at least partially compile the project in order to generate those errors. Uh, so if you haven't seen any errors at all in your project as you're writing them, that probably means that you're not actually getting your errors reported because you've targeted a framework that you're not supporting. So do be uh, careful and understand that. If you have questions, ask me, ask the TAs. We're here to help with that. So uh, some things to keep in mind. So at this point, you should be ready to start developing your project. You should have everything you need to move forward. All right, thanks for your time, and we will see you in class.